dear parents, brothers and sisters and little children, hope and pray that all of you are in good health. Let me start with this quotation from my spiritual book. I think that I am walking in sinful ways and now I want to make my paths right. And that is the greatest desire of every Christian, each one of us, who wants to return to the Lord during this London season, not only London season, every day of our life. The intention, this intention of the heart leads us, leads us to conversion or transformation of life. It is said, conversion of the heart and mind is the symbol and valuable reason behind our every penitential service. We started our London journey on Ash Wednesday, placing ashes on our foreheads or sprinkling ash on, the, uh, on our head with a great acceptance of the truth that is, you are dust, and unto the dust you are to return. And as a priest places ashes on our forehead, he says that repent and believe in the gospel. Returning to God with contrite hearts was the principal theme message of Pope Francis on his, in his homily on Ash Wednesday. He says, Lent is a journey to return to God. Lent is a time to reconsider the path one is taking in life and finally answer God's invitation to return to him with one's whole heart. And last Sunday, we are invited by the liturgy of the word to convert ourselves with great assurance of God's mercy and his covenantal relationship is never broken. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant mercy to the thousandth generation toward those who love him and keep his commandments. His mercy is more powerful and everlasting. We also reflected upon, or I suggested to reflect upon the Psalms 25 and 51, that God is ever, ever ready to forgive us, provided we will return to him with contrite hearts. Matthew chapter 4, 17, and I said it is a time of fulfillment. It is the time uh, to return to the Lord. Jesus says that from that time on, that is very important, from that time onwards, Jesus preached and said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And today, my dear friends, we have three powerful readings that will strengthen our faith, increase our confidence and love, and make our li life more hopeful in eternal glory. And we need these concepts, these three concepts, or three requirements in mind when we return to God. Firstly, when we return to God in prayer and repentance, we should have great faith like that of Abraham the father. For we read in the first reading the moving story of Abraham and Isaac, a journey in faith which was so intense as to surpass human logic. We cannot understand exactly. But Abraham was called to do something very impossible, that is to sacrifice his own son. We see that Abraham obeyed. Abraham obeyed and surrendered to God's will. His unfailing, unwavering faith 
is so well reflected upon. Now let us talk for a moment. What about our parents? Let us think of our the great faith of their our faith of our parents, or the faith of our neighbors whom we see, our friends who had to face great difficulties in the life, and still we might have heard they say, "I thank you, Lord, you are my everything. Everything happened according to God's will." Secondly, when we return to God in prayer and repentance, we need to believe totally in the everlasting and inseparable love of God, our Father. Not only we should have the strong faith like Abraham, the father, but also we should believe totally in the steadfast love, inseparable love of God the Father. That is why the second reading we St. Paul tells us that God's love has no limits. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nobody can be against us if we have the love of God. Paul assures us that God is for us. On our faith journey, my dear friends, and the challenge of the gospel living will bring hardship and struggles. You know, as we read the life of Christians, early Christians, the martyrs, and even today, our Christians are really struggling in order to keep up the faith, but they never go away from the Christian faith. Paul tells us that our security is in the gift of God's grace, his unfailing and steadfast love, God's uh, uh, grace will empower us to bear our share of hardship for the gospel. Psalms 118 verse 1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And John chapter 15, verse 9, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. That leads us to the gospel. Thirdly, when we return to God in prayer and repentance, we should have the true hope in the heavenly glory as Jesus showed us in the time of transfiguration. Not only we have the great faith like the father, uh, Abraham the father, not only we should believe totally in the steadfast love of our uh, Jesus, our God, and here we see we should have the hope in the heavenly glory that awaits us. We all will have the little glance at the heavenly glory the gospel today challenges each one of us to have that full and radical transformation in order to be transfigured with the heavenly glory. And we need to listen to him, Mark chapter 9, 2 to 10. We hear the voice of God declaring Jesus as the beloved son and calling all disciples to listen to him. Now, did you notice? the gospel, in the presence of Jesus transfigured in glory, Peter, James, and John uh, felt very secure, happy, felt at, uh, felt at home, and for Peter said, let us make three tents, uh, here, tents for you all. It is nice to be here. But the journey, Jesus must have said, but the journey of Jesus was not complete. Jesus said, come on, come on, let us let us go down. Do not remain here. Do not make the tents. Let us go down. Go down to continue the journey, proclaim the gospel, uh, facing the challenges of the ministry. They had to walk in mystery. That is why at the end of the passage, we can see that 
they continued, they did not know what to reflect. They continued to reflect upon the resurrection of the dead. The journey of Jesus would take him to the cross, you know that, and then to the unending glory, the resurrection. But the disciples should continue their journey into the unknown, uncertain, and insecure future. My dear friends, today we are challenged to take that journey of the disciples to the unknown, insecure world of the, with faith and love. As you sometimes may ask the question, what is the future of my children? Did you ever think of our own experience that we gain when we pray, attend mass, and participate? Uh, like the disciples, like, the, like Peter, uh, might have felt very, uh, very peace. That is why very often I told you uh, that um, many times if anyone sees, anyone sleeps in, in your neighborhood, okay, in the church, do not disturb. So there is a time to say, uh, not if anyone is sleeping, don't disturb them, okay? So that is why we, when we pray, when we attend the Mass, when we participate in the religious ceremonies, we experience something, a peaceful heart. We are being loved and forgiven by God. We feel greatness. We feel wonder at the miracles of the Lord. We will have the purity of hearts and minds. We will experience a glory and a happiness. And we really have the peace within us. Once the Mass is over, the prayer is over, sometimes nowadays here, we have to get out very fast after the Mass. Am I correct? We cannot be here. They, they have to, what you call, um, they have to sanitize the church. Hmm? So we all have, to, all have to be out very fast. We all will go back to the world to face the challenges. We will experience uh, inconveniences, rejection, loneliness, suffering, pain, cross, or to say all sorts of struggles starting from birth to death. Only through our prayer, my dear friends, we can stand strong in faith, believe in the steadfast love of God, and be hopeful in the heavenly glory that awaits us. Let me conclude with the words of Pope Francis. The common practice of giving something up is connected with the fasting, sacrifice that helps us to remember Christ's sacrifice Rather than focusing on additional fasting, I would challenge young people to be more attentive to their prayer life in this land. So my dear friends, as we go out of this church today, let, me, let us have this decision, one more step, one more resolution to pray more to have strong faith like Abraham the father, to, have, to believe in the steadfast mercy, steadfast love and mercy of God, and to ex help us to be more hopeful for the heavenly glory that awaits us. Let us continue to pray, pray, and pray. Thank you. Amen. Are you all okay? Let us all stand and profess our faith.